everybody, John Van Dyke here in New Jersey Exposed. Today is March 7th, 2023. Time is 10.03 a.m. I'm here in Kingsburg, New Jersey. Sheriff's Department has their community outreach van here uh, for drugs, so we're gonna go check it out and see what it's all about. See how they behave. Morning. John Van Dyke, New Jersey Exposed. We're here to cover your little uh, outreach program today. How you doing, John? I'm doing all right. Hi. So, what can so you I, tell us? I'm going to stand so I don't look like the lazy guy. All right. So, what I can tell you is... All right, first of all, who are you? My name's Dave Clouser. I'm a community service aide for the Hope One van. You work for the county? I work for the sheriff's office. Okay. And so the Hope One van stands for Heroin, Opiate Prevention and Education. And we've got hygiene bags. Hygiene filled. bags. And what's in there? All right, so we got the... We've got some needs. women's products, toothbrush, toothpaste, conditioner, shampoo, now, do you make these bags for men and separate ones for men and separate ones for women, or? Uh, it's kind of one bag for everyone. Uh, other than uh, feminine hygiene products, everything is. Now, my question to you, this is about, about drugs. So how is this helping the drugs, giving them toothpaste and shampoo and things? It begins a dialogue. We're from the sheriff's office, so many times people have a stereotype. We're here to arrest and create discomfort. And so the bags help us initiate a conversation and communicate a message that we're here to help. So this is the hook? It's the bait. It's the bait. Okay, I appreciate your honesty. <laughs> Any, anybody could be in need. Right. And who are you, sir? My name is Andy Caruso. I work for the sheriff's office. Are you uh, an officer? Or uh, no, I'm, uh, I'm an EMS guy. Okay, very guy. good. Well, you know, I, I I live here in the Berks, so I have a little familiarity with some of the stuff that goes on around here. I think you should be here in the evening hours because most of these type of people are sleeping late. We've, we've gotten some suggestions today. Yeah. About when we should be here. Because I, I live in a place where we have people who are on methadone and things like that, and they all sleep late. They're not... They're up. Not early risers. Right, they're up all night and sleep all day. Okay. And so the number on there is my personal cell phone. So if you ever encounter someone who's in immediate need, needs detox, don't hesitate to call. Now, you're not giving out any Narcan or anything today, or? We can. We can if someone would like some. I would like some. Has anybody been here besides me, or? Yeah, we've had a few people come by earlier. It's kind of a, uh, it's, you know, got a guess. It's a, it's a cold day. I, I, you know, really, the best place to have been set up may have been down by the 7-Eleven, if you could set up in the lot over there, if they let you, or? I think there's probably a partnership with the church. And Is that what? Yeah, I think that's how it usually works. We don't set it up, but. Because this is not a. It's not a huge thoroughfare. It's just not a thoroughfare. Yeah, right downtown or 7-Eleven, that, that's the place. No commissioners coming out? No Sheriff uh, Golden? No... Uh... So we're, we do this a lot. We do this a couple times a, uh, a couple times a week. So it would just be a lot for the commissioners and the sheriff. They come out when, uh, you know, when we do these events, but not all the time. All right, so if I suspect somebody of... Uh, Heroin overdose. I take this. And so what you would do is not necessarily just suspected of heroin overdose. Uh, what we te teach people to do is look for the signs of heroin overdose or opiate overdose. What are the signs? Pinpoint pupils and depressed respiratory um, and uh, altered level of consciousness. So if somebody just happens to be on heroin or some kind of opioid, we wouldn't want you to give that 
that Narcan. We would want, we would only give that for somebody that's in need. Out. So Down yeah, these out. are people that are that are essentially overdosed. So yeah. you want to be able to um, to administer the Narcan and get them back to a place where they could breathe normally on their right. own. So that's that's the issue with now the, the latest thing is that you Narcan these people and then they get better and they're right back. Uh, we got some, uh, well, you could lead a horse to water, but we have information and I'll, I'll get some for you as well. Um, so we have, when we give Narcan like that, uh, we give them information with resources, uh, who to call. Uh, we leave it for the family members to contact to get help for these people, um, so that they're not in. The I find the only way you can help. Them, uh, I have experience with it. Not that I, not that I was on heroin, but. I work in the funeral business and I've seen many overdoses. We had one year we had about 10 overdoses. It seems to calm down a little bit now, but all these people got on it. The families all say the same thing. We tried to help. We tried to this. We tried to do that. We couldn't do it. I know somebody who was hooked on it. She's on methadone now. And she told me, you know, once you get on it, the, the hunger for that drug is so strong. It makes you sick if you don't get it that they resort to doing things they don't want to do. And, and I don't even know if methadone is, is, the, is the answer either because they ride that train for as long as they can. Well, so the point is it's called harm reduction. So I would much rather have somebody on methadone than shooting dope. Right. Risky Well, I, I agree with that. I, I think probably the only way you really gotta detain them and lock them up, you know, so that they forced to go through the program that they need to do, because otherwise they go right back to the same friends, same neighborhood. You know and, what I'm saying? It's a vicious circle. And so as Andy was saying, when someone overdoses, that's when we try to appeal to their good sense. Sometimes there's a connection and they do go for detox and treatment. And then other times you have a fight on your hands because their high got interrupted. Yeah, we had, I remember one story of this guy. I saw this picture of him. He was like a football player. By the time he died, he was skinny like me. He had a beautiful wife. I just had a beautiful newborn. And I go, this guy's got everything in the world to live for. And, but that drug is so strong. And what puzzles me is with all we know about it, People are still trying it. And so that's the question, isn't it? Because the alcohol and the drug use is a symptom of some need of mine that isn't right. being fulfilled that I need to inject this lethal drug in, into my body. It's, a, it's tough. You, you, you've really got to get them into, into some type of therapy and... and have to want to do it. But how do you do that when you got to work in, or they're not working probably, you know, so they're out there either stealing, robbing, or selling it, selling themselves. It's, it's a vicious circle to get in and to well, get out and, of. And so we have to start a dialogue and help that person see what you see. That I'm on a one, one way track that's not going to end well. Yeah. And create a desire and a need to change. I tell anybody, if you got to take that stuff, you might as well just go make your arrangements because there's only one end result. Some people do get help and some people do turn around and, and those are the ones that, that we're hoping to reach. So. Now, what is, the, what is the county or the prosecutors or whoever, what is their position on it? So, Say I overdose, you find the heroin on me, I've overdosed. I'm now going to be better arrested. Yet, better yet, I'm with you. Yes. One of us overdoses is on the verge of death. I call 911 because I know there's a good Samaritan law. And so even though we have five bundles of heroin, I value your life, so I call 911. The police, the sheriff, the authorities come, they administer Narcan, hopefully they transport you to the nearest hospital, and now they see the collection of drugs, illegal, illicit drugs, paraphernalia. And I'm okay, because I was acting under the Good Samaritan law. Yeah, I understand that. What is your point about it being on the ground? It's well, not in my possession. Well, so the point is that if drugs and paraphernalia are present at the scene of an overdose, 
I can't be prosecuted for that stuff. Right, because you're the Good Samaritan. So I, I, I always thought the best thing to do is if somebody overdoses on heroin, we know they overdose on heroin, you're going to have two choices. You're gonna, we have to provide a system where they can go and get the help and have a place to sleep and live and, and get off it, or you go to jail. That's your choices. And it, it seems like it seems like people have to go through the criminal justice system before they get the help they need, especially if they have mental illness. And that's why we're here today, to let people know if you have a problem, you don't have to go that route. You can get off that train today. All right, so I'm hooked on heroin. I go to you and I say, Dave, I need to get help. I need a place to live. I need to eat. I need to get help. Is there a system in place to do that? There isn't a one size, one stop. It's going to be bits and pieces. If you're homeless, I'm going to do my best to get you into detox today to get you off the street so that you've got shelter. At the detox, you're going to get fed. And then that starts the process. A social worker can get with you. In my opinion, sober housing, going to an Oxford house or another kind of sober living arrangement where you're living with other men who are trying to do what you're trying to do. And piece by so piece. So there is a system in place for, uh, for a detox and where you can go, I'm sorry. You can go in for a detox. Yes. And get help. Yes. That's the main, okay, great. Oh shoot, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, so if somebody's got drug problem, heroin problem, where, what, what is the first thing they need to do? I want to get help. What is the first thing I do? They need to reach out to someone and say, I need help. Okay, and that's well, why I'm I gave you my you, Dave, card. I need help. Okay, so I'm going to determine talking to you if you're willing to go to detox. And then what I would do is I would call the IME number. The IME is a state agency that keeps track of all the beds in detox and treatment throughout New Jersey. They would help us identify where there's an open bed in detox. We'd find out what kind of insurance you have. And try I got to no insurance, I got nothing. I got my, my good looks and that's it. Or maybe I have insurance for the state. Okay. And then we, what the IME does is they would go through an assessment with the individual to find out if there are DUIs, what kind of history there is for a variety of funding streams for your detox and for your treatment. And once you get into detox, then the system would begin. Now, is the state financing or the county financing any programs or anything? Is this all privately funded not the county but the state does fund a variety of programs this heroin problem is a big problem I mean I I, I actually volunteered well applied to be with the sheriff's office I don't know if they're still doing that but they were going around the schools and they were having the sh having an officer there having a recovering addict there and I said, well, you know, the cop tells you don't do it because I'm going to arrest you. The heroin, the addict tells you, oh, I had my fun. You don't have it. And I was going to go there and say, I'm not telling you to do it or not to do it. What I'm telling you, if you do it, this is what's going to happen. And I was going to do it from a funeral point of view that uh, I'm going to pick you up at the, at the ME office. You're going to be in a bag. This is what you're going to look like. Your family's going to have to identify you. Your, and when you die, your family's going to have to clean out your room for you. And by the way, do you know how heroin kills you? It suppresses your breathing. You suffocate to death. You want to suffocate to death? I don't know what it's like. I assume it's like when you're sleeping and you can't breathe because you're sleeping on your face something. So if that's the way you want to go, that's a hell of a way to do it. But, but I, I didn't get picked. I don't know. Maybe the sheriff and I, uh, you know. <laughs> we have our differences. <laughs> so anyway, but 
All right, guys, so, so is there a final message you want to tell everybody before we uh, conclude this? Sure. The Sheriff's Office is here to connect people with help that's available. Okay. Dave, I want to thank you for your time and uh, this officer over here who I've named I don't remember. Andy Caruso. You're not an officer, you're an EMS, sir. Andy Caruso. All right, and he's running off. He doesn't want to get involved. Okay. All right, guys, thanks a lot for your time. Thank you. Another jacket plan Push and dope for the man A terrible blow, but that's how it go A friend is on the corner now If you want to be a junkie, wow Remember Fred is dead We're all built up with progress But sometimes I must confess We can deal with rockets and dreams but reality, what does it mean? Ain't nothing said.